Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, commonly referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. In this video, I'm going to talk about sewing the crotch curve and an anomaly that happens that I call the crotch blip. I don't have any other better way to explain it, but what I'm going to do to help you understand this is show you a photograph. A customer sent me this photograph and she said, Glenda, look what's happening to my crotch point. It's blipping upward. Do I follow that blip upward when I'm stitching the crotch curvature or do I stitch straight across? Well, let me just tell you that if you follow the cut lines as you saw in that photograph, what's going to happen is you're going to create more of a um, bulky how do I want to say this, a, 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 a bulky bunch of fabric right between your legs. And I'm showing you in this next photograph kind of a diamond shape. And this is an example of where she did follow the blip upward and back on the other side of the crotch. And then it couldn't be pressed nicely and it did cause bulk in between her legs at her crotch curvature. And so what you really want to be doing is sewing straight across, as I've got in this photograph right here. But let me explain to you why this all happens in the first place. Let's take a look at these two rectangles that I have on the wall here. Now, in this situation, we're saying that this is a leg and this is a pant leg. And if you go to sew these together, we're going to describe this as the inseams, this is a side seam, this is a side seam, and this is a flat crotch. I didn't even call it a curve. This is a flat crotch. And because it's two rectangular pieces of fabric, they're really easy to sew together. We don't have any curves. But in reality, this is not what happens because our legs of our, our pants patterns have curves to them. And one thing I should just tell you is that this doesn't just happen with the SureFit Designs pants pattern. It happens with any pants pattern from any manufacturer. So watch what happens to these straight rectangles as I actually pretend to be drawing a pant leg. And I've got it already drawn here in red. And let me put the other leg down on this side as well. Okay, so now your pant leg is drawn in red. So you can really see the differences. So at the inseam, instead of coming straight down, we've got curves that start to narrow the pant leg as it comes down our leg. And on the side seam, we also have a curvature from the hip point that brings the leg inward on the side seam. So now our legs are starting to narrow. And if this blue line was the crotch line, now you can see what's happened is it's got turned upright and it's got a crotch extension point on it. So let's take a look at this pair of pants right here. Here is our crotch extension point. And of course the crotch curve. Now this particular way of sewing a pair of pants together sews the inseam together, then the side seam together, then you turn one leg right side out and you put it down inside the other leg. So what you're left with is this bowl to sew like this. Now, now we're going to take a look at the actual pants pattern. This is what I'm calling the back crotch point number two, this is actually your back crotch extension point. So the smaller your hip circumference, the less extension you have because you're small this way and this way. And of course, coming down into the inseam, you'd have a shallower curve. But as your hips get bigger, this back crotch point number two extends further and further out. And so from here now, to start that inward curvature of the leg, we get quite a dramatic inseam curve coming in to help you narrow that leg down to your 
the shape that you would like. So now you've sewn the inseam, sewn the side seam, put one leg inside the other, and now what happens is you get quite a severe blip up when you start putting your crotch bowl together. And what you really want to be doing is sewing right across, as I showed you in this illustration here. And I'll just pop this back up in the screen so that you can see that. So that's going to take that lump of fabric off your crotch curve. And when you've got that done, you absolutely need to trim the crotch curvature. So this isn't a particularly large hip size, but I think you'll get the idea here is that we're coming from one side down the bowl, sewing across the crotch shelf, and then coming up the other side. And the bit that you would cut off here, you're going to go back to your master pattern, and you're actually going to take that off the, the height of that crotch curvature. You're going to remove it so that when you have modified your pant blueprint, that you never need to do it again. Now, where you're going to find the directions for doing this are in your pant kit instruction book. And some people skip over the directions on testing your pant. Don't do that. Read the directions. It kind of flows you through the process of, of putting your pants together. And at step number eight, over to the right of that, there's a little illustration and it's showing you truing that blip off the crotch curve. And one of the sentences in there says, truing the crotch curve at the inseam if necessary, because it might not be necessary for your pant leg. But let me tell you when it will be. The greater the crotch extension point and the more angled or sharp of a curve going into the inseam. So let me just take this and I'll say, let's say that your crotch extension point came way out and then you had to shape your inseam even further. Well, the more dramatic these curves are in the inseam, as you force them together, what is happening is they come together, they sew together perfectly because you know, the inseams are both the same length. But you are taking this fabric and you're pushing it up and it forms that blip that I showed you in the other photograph at the beginning. So it's just a short little video that I wanted to talk about this anomaly that may or may not happen with your pants pattern when you're sewing it together, depending on what the size of your hip circumference is. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. And if you have, I encourage you to join our Surefit Designs community. And you can do that. I invite you to go to surefitdesigns.com, sign up for our newsletter. There'll be a pop-up there that you can put your information in. It's totally free. And there are four free gifts to get you started. And while you're in YouTube watching this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please make sure you continue to watch more Surefit Designs videos. We have th over 300 for your viewing pleasure and learning. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.